free estimates for the this will be jim uh, discussing about uh, future plans of model yes okay okay so um uh, so we'll go on from where Aditya left off, of course, we've got the metal collaborations, lots of plans for run three and, and beyond, and I'm going to talk to you about these plans. Uh, and the big plan is to continue to run metal and also to include a new detector called MAP, that's the metal apparatus for penetrating particles. So a lot of people may not be that familiar with metal, uh, it sits Let's see if I, you can see, I don't know if you can see that pointer, but it sits by LHCB uh, with, with alongside LHCB at IP8. And we've gotten to be quite a big collaboration, not by uh, LHC collider stands, but maybe by fixed star, target stands. We've now got about 70 physicists and 30 institutes in 14 countries around the world. So the metal map project is going to proceed in phases, uh, largely due to funding to, to make sure we can get the funding over the, the required funding to do what we need to do. This, as you see from Aditya's nice talk, is uh, the map, the metal existing metal experiment situated at point eight. This will be reinstalled for uh, run three. And we're also going to put in this UGC1 gallery, some 55 meters away from the uh, intersection point, IP8, uh, a detector that will, will be enable us to look for milli charged particles, also long lived particles. So it proceeds in these phases. First, we'll, we'll reinstall metal and map, the map milli charge detector. That's the central core of this detector. Then phase two, and that will be. Uh, for, for run three for certain. Uh, map one, uh, phase two, we'll install map one and mole detector, which is a monopole apparatus for very long lived charged particles. And that will be installed sometime towards the end of run three. And then map two, that will be installed for uh, high luminosity LHC running. Um, okay, so run four and beyond. So what's the physics we want to do? Uh, well, here we have a, a sort, of uh, sort of brief summary of the kind of physics. We, we now, with, map, with the map and detector, will have a sensitivity for the new dark sector model. So we're not so new these days, I guess. So we'll be sensitive to three uh, experimental avatars of new physics, highly ionizing particles, which, which we've just been talking about, things like monopoles, long-lived particles that, of course, are very topical these days, and mini-charged particles, and of course, included in this category of long-lived and mini-charged particles, we have the feebly interacting particles. So, let's say this map detector will allow us to expand the physics reach to include dark sector models, hidden value models, etc. So, if, if people are interested, we've, uh, we've got a model map uh, snow mass effort on the FO9. And here we see the uh, front page of the standard document you have to uh, contribute. So pe people are interested in go and read that. Um, now we're actually seeking approval. A lot of the things that are reported in the literature of our uh, experiments that are, should we say, hypothetical at the moment, no doubt they'll become real, but we're at the stage of actually getting approved by LHCC. Uh, we what happened? Something went, went wrong there. We um, submitted a metal map phase one technical design report for consideration by the LHCC, and they endorsed the, the, our physics aim and our detector approach. But it seemed because of COVID, et cetera, we decided to split the, the uh, design report into two. First up would be the metal, uh, metal redeployment. And that is essentially halfway to approval. We've been approved by LHCC on the grounds uh, as long as LHCB has no problem, and we're working on that now. Uh, MAP experiment, which goes into the uh, UGC1 gallery. This, unlike the metal experiment, which is largely passive, as Aditya said, the MAP experiment is all active. Unfortunately, the MAP, the 
uh, UGC1 gallery needs a, a bit of work. So we're working on that. That gallery will be upgraded in 2021 22. And uh, MAP would start to run, we envisage, in 2023, whereas we would start data taking with metal in 2022 uh, when the LHC starts PP data taking. So phase 1A, that's the reinstallation of metal. We have the metal detector that I won't go through because Aditya's um, described it nicely. We won't be having the high charge catcher, at least initially, but we'll probably will, we'll have uh, an upgraded TimePix 3 uh, array that for the first time will enable us to do some exotic physics as well. So we're very excited about that, but essentially we'll just take advantage of the high luminosity, the high luminosity LHC point is in fiber over the run to uh, values and also we'll have uh, the higher central mass energy but of course we'll, we'll be able to do some physics with the time pix 3 array we believe so phase 1b well that's you phase 1b will be the installation of the the map millicharge particle detector this is a drawing of it here with a person to give the scale the basic unit is a simply a scintillator bar that's 75 centimeters long and 10 centimeters in cross by 10 centimeters in cross section. There are four sections and 400 uh, scintillator bars. This, this is roughly a square meter by a square, well, that is a square meter by a square meter and sensitive detector. It's covered with veto detectors. And the idea is that the uh, millicharge particle will traverse this whole detector, traversing something like three meters of scintillator uh, to enable uh, us to push down to charges that are about one thousandth of the electric charge. And here we see just, by the way, the UGC-1 gallery, which looks pretty nice to me, but according to CERN needs about half a million Swiss francs of work doing on it to make it nice and pretty for us. Um, we'll be using a software trigger based on FPGA, so we should be pretty, uh, but we don't have too much data, so we should be able to cover a whole number of uh, situations and try and keep the trigger as loose as possible. And it, nice, another nice thing, it operates in a standalone mode in the UGC1 gallery and doesn't need constant manning and teaming, but we will have people out there in situ in case of technical problems uh, during the run. Phase two, uh, which is later in run three, we will build, uh, should we say, a Russian box around the, the central millicharge detector. This is a three layer box. The lid is missing and the floor is, you can't see the floor, but it's a total box. We have a, with a veto layer in the front where the particles will come in. Of course, we want to veto any charged particles coming in from being considered because this is a neutral particle decay detector. And these, uh, this box is constructed. You can see it's about seven meters by three meters by eight meters. This, I call it a Russian box because it's three boxes, one inside the other. And the tracking is, is done by a fine grain uh, uh, wavelength shifting fibers embedded in the front face and the front face and the back face of, of scintillator plate and that by Sippens. Uh, here we see the pitch, we see the X and the Y readout. Uh, with, we believe that we should be able to get better than one centimeter res resolution on the, on, the point, on the position hit and we'll be able to get sufficiently good uh, vertex resolution to be able to rule out lots of background. Uh, that we, this is what we need to do to be able to really measure the uh, long of particles. So when phase two is installed, we'll add to our already hip detection ability, highly ionized ability and the feebly interacting particle ability or the milli charged particle interacting ability, we'll be able to add to that the long-lived particle detection ability. Uh, phase three will be MAP2, uh, where we basically extend MAP1 long-lived particle detector down the UGC1 gallery, uh, down to about 20 degrees or maybe further from one end to the other, if you want. Um, and we'll continue the MAP1 technology, which provides us a very low cost solution compared to lots of the other uh, proposals. 
So let's give some physics uh, baselines. Uh, we've we've done, on the left we've looked at the decay of dark photon to uh, to milli charge particle pairs that's been con that's considered, for example, in Millikan's proposal. Um, and here we see the the kind of limits we can place at 300 inverse femtobarns, 30 inverse femtobarns, and three inverse femtobarns. Uh, this is very similar to Millikan. Uh, to Millikan's limits, and, and we see here uh, the limit from Argonaut uh, that's already been placed. So another another interesting physics case that we've come up with, but it's actually uh, first introduced by Chair, uh, Professor Chair. Uh, the idea is that a heavy neutrino can have, in, in, certain, in lots of quite a few models actually, can have a large electric dipole moment, and the electric dipole moment can actually ionize, uh, in ionizing increasingly as a function of gamma. And we can detect this as a millicharged particle. And here we see the uh, millicharge, uh, the, ex the electric dipole moment of the neutrino against the mass. And we can see we can put limits out down to uh, around about 10 to the electric dipole moments of around about 10 to the minus 16, 10 to the minus 17 E centimeters. So that's the kind of an example of the kind of physics we can do with feebly interacting particles or milli charged particles. Um, and when we go to the long lived particle detector, um, we can, for example, look for, for dark sector models where we have Higgs mixing portal, which allows a decay, B decays to uh, scalar particles that decay again to mu plus and mu minus pairs, for example. Considering that case where we have this is more or less the coupling on this on this vertical axis and the mass on that axis, we can compare with codex B, for example. This is uh, the this this is the codex B contour for 300 inverse femtobarns, uh, and this is the uh, uh, this is the orange line is the codex is the sorry the map. One contour for 300 inverse femtobarns, which you can see is uh, pushes the search up. It's very similar at, at very small couplings, but pushes the search up to sort of intersect more with LHB uh, at, the, at the larger couplings. And we can see here when we can, we can add in Methuselah and Ship. And we see that what it does is produces nice complementarity between LHCB and, for, for example, Methuselah. It covers this uh, map one covers this region uh, that that should we say uh, enables us to cover the whole region between LHCB projections and uh, Methuselah. So it's a nice complementary detector to Methuselah and Codex B, and essentially does uh, more work than Codex B. Now. One caveat here is that everybody's considered their detector to be 100% um, efficient in the on these plots. So the we have to worry, of course, that when we get the real efficiency in things, will get slightly, will get worse. Map two. When we go to map two and extend the detector down the tunnel, we see that map two extends the range for this uh, for the search for new scalar decays by this dark set of model we considered. So it, it more or less then covers the same region as ship. There's a little bit here that ship does that we don't do, but we essentially uh, push the search down into the ship region and into Methuselah's region too. But of course, Methuselah still has a nice piece of work to do here. But we again are nice and complementary in this channel between LHCB and Methuselah. We can also consider pair production of rat andrew neutrinos uh, from the decay of an additional neutral Z0 boson in gauge BL model that's been considered uh, by UCL group. And we can see uh, what the luminosities used are. Map two, we've considered 300 inverse femtobarn, codex B the same because they're, they're deployed also in the B at the LHCB region, but phaser and Methuselah are three inverse atobarns, so they're 10 times as much. But we can still see that MAP2 is, is competitive with phaser 
in fact, nicely fills up the region between, again, between LHCB and Methuselah. Again, that's nice complementarity. So in summary then, uh, what have we got for, for run three? Well, we have a detector that's actually going to be running at run three. Um, uh, metal starts in 2022 and MAP starts uh, in 2023. And we can see here what kind of uh, sensitivity we have. We see with metal, of course, you've seen it with Aditya's nice took. We have this sensitivity to highly ionizing particles. We've had that since we since run two. When we have MAP mini charge detector in phase one, we'll add the ability for uh, to be, de be able to detect weakly ionizing particles and milli charged particles. And that starts in 20, uh, that starts, I should say 2022, but no, 2023, because we have to wait the year for the UGC one gallery. That's, I can't get that out of my head. Map one, uh, 2024, when we, when we install the, uh, the neutral particle detector, the, decay detector, then we'll have uh, sensitivity to all three of the avatars of new physics that I talked about at the beginning, highly ionizing particles, uh, weakly uh, milli charged particles, long lived particles. And then when MAP2 goes in, we'll be able to push the super long lived neutrals uh, to, to a competitive, in a competitive way with, in a complementary way with other detectors in the same area. We expect that to start in 2026. So that's our program. I hope you're interested. That's it. Benito. Thank you, Jim. Questions? Uh, in terms of heavy ions, which one of these uh, objects is, uh, is more interesting? I think they're all, I certainly I've seen in heavy ion physics, they're all interesting because uh, uh, I would say that you start to get more interested in when we have the neutral particle detector uh, deployed in 2024-ish. Um, but we can, for example, detect, we believe in the, and this hasn't been explained here, in the milli charge particle detector, we can maybe look at ALPS produced in the sort of, uh, in the interactions, the secondary interactions and the primary interactions coming pointing at that uh, detector. And we know that they can be, be produced in heavy iron collisions as well. Uh, but I guess we, we stand with the other neutral party detectors and the uh, neutral part of the decay detectors that we've been seeing that, that we see have got some interest for, for uh, heavy iron. So I would say, uh, we get it starts to get really interesting when the neutral particle decay detectors in there. So uh, when map one goes in is what I would guess. Thank you. Any other well, questions? by the way, we also when I, having said that we we're, we're ignoring Aditya's talk where he's already shown that it's interesting to to uh, heavy iron physicists because we've detected this. Uh, well, we can put limits on monopoles produced by heavy iron. So in a sense, we already have, and we'll continue to have interest from the, for the heavy iron community via the metal detector of the metal map detect the pair. Well, we just, I mean, we say, when is it interest of heavy iron physics? We've already seen that it already is, because through the metal detector, we've just seen a talk for, uh, from the metal detector, which is a heavy iron result. Great. We thank, thank you again, Jim, for this nice overview of the future of metal. And we've moved.